Um, Samantha, can you just um, just uh, reiterate that this is the 7 p.m. Spanish will be afterwards? Yes. Yes. So, bienvenidos a todos. Esa presentación es en inglés a las 7 a 7 y media. Uh, tenemos una presentación que estará en español. So, si quiere uh, escuchar en español, entonces puede esperar hasta las 7. En este mismo sitio vamos a tener eso. So, otra vez, esta presentación estará en inglés y a las 7 tenemos en español. Gracias. Thank you so much, Samantha. Mm -hmm. Good evening. This is the 6 p.m. workshop about tenant rights during COVID, uh, during COVID uh, in English. There is a 7 p.m. workshop in Spanish. My name is Sean Scaraya. Welcome to Evergreen Charter School's online workshops. Thank you for joining us tonight for a series of online workshops to keep families informed of the facts during the crisis. Tonight's presentation will give you information about your rights as renters. There are documents that you can download uh, in the website that will make it easier to follow along to tonight's presentation. Tonight's presenter is Samantha, Samantha Paff from the Central American Refugee Center right here in Hempstead, New York. The presenter will present for 20 to 25 minutes, and there will be a question and answer session for the last five to 10 minutes. You can ask a question by, po uh, by posting a question in the question box and the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, thank you so much, Samantha, for being here today, and I'll leave it up to her. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Yes, so, um, oops, that's switching out of the one we had. There we go. Uh, so welcome to this tenants' rights presentation. So tonight, like Sean said, we're going to talk about uh, just some some basic rights, especially during this coronavirus pandemic, of renters and tenants. And so what we're going to cover tonight will include uh, just some general rights, as well as where you can get uh, help and assistance and resources if you are having issues with your landlord or just want to know more. Uh, in preparation. So one of the main things people will wonder are, are if evictions are still happening. And so there's currently an eviction moratorium in New York. And what does this mean for you, right, of, of what is a moratorium exactly? So that means that evictions are essentially on pause. Uh, on May 20th, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued a 90-day moratorium. And so this means that for those 90 days, from March 20th until June 19th, uh, there will be a suspension, a, a pause of evictions. And so even if you received a 14-day notice from the sheriff about an eviction, you will not be evicted until at least June 19th. Uh, after that date, we don't exactly know what will happen. Uh, it's unclear of, of whether there will be any extensions as this is a constantly changing situation. And so, Stay posted and, and you know keep looking into continued resources that we share at the end of this so that you can uh, understand what might be happening. And you might already have started an eviction proceeding prior to this. And so if that is the case and you had a court date, uh, those have been adjourned, right? So that will be pushed off and, and held until a later date, right? So if you had a, an eviction notice or an eviction court date proceeding, that would have been say this week, for example, that will not happen and it will go later until late May, early June. Again, that is a constantly changing uh, realm that we're living in. So we will see uh, if those are adjourned or pushed back even further. You can also check out uh, adjournment dates if you have a case with the district court by going to the e-courts. And so here I'll just click on this link and show you real quick what it looks like. And so you will, uh, perhaps you'd have an index number if you are a, in a court case as a Jane Doe or a John Doe, but you can also look by party name. And so if you did a party search, for example, you'd be able to look it up based on your name. Uh, I'm not a robot. And yeah, so here you can see, you know, plaintiff, defendant, right, whatever is applicable for you, you find the court that this is happening in, and you just add in this information as it is pertinent and relevant to your case. Um, so let's hop back into these slides. So 
perhaps you don't have a prior eviction proceeding, right? Perhaps you are worried about happening and coming up now, right? So what if you can't pay your rent this month? Uh, you know, we have May starting this Friday, May 1st. So maybe you're you're worried, right? You've got a rent payment due on Friday or, you know, sometime, you know, in the coming weeks and you're just not sure how you're going to be able to, to cover it while still supporting your household. And so that's definitely a, a challenge that many families are facing because of coronavirus and the issues that people are having in you know, work stability, right? Of income uh, being completely cut off if if they're losing their jobs or not having as, as many work hours uh, and just the, the challenges that, that come with this current pandemic. And while evictions are suspended, rent is still due. So if if you are able to pay rent, you should do your best to, to do that and pay rent. Um, one of the things you can do is you can contact your local Department of Social Services to see if you're eligible for emergency rent assistance. At the end of this presentation, I'll also talk about some other uh, support services that might be helpful for you, um, but definitely look into the emergency rent assistance if possible. Uh, if you aren't able to pay your rent, if you don't qualify for any assistance, your landlord, again, there's a moratorium, a suspension of evictions. So your landlord cannot start an eviction proceeding until the courts reopen. And due to the, the suspension, the moratorium on evictions, they will not be able to complete an eviction until the moratorium ends in June. Another option, if you aren't able to pay your rent, is talk to your landlord, right? They might be understanding and, and helpful and able to work out a, a you know, payment plan or you know, something to, to make the situation easier, right? It, it doesn't hurt to be open and honest and say, hey, I was laid off or my, you know, the, the place where I work is closed, so I'm not earning an income, right? So talk to them and see what you can work out. Maybe they can make an arrangement, an agreement for how much you would pay or, or just hold off for a month. Um, I would recommend that you, you try and get this in writing if an agreement is formed so that later you do have proof. There is you know, some protection and security for you in case anything weird happens. Um, but maybe your landlord will be helpful, right? So there's also folks who might live in a house or an apartment where their landlord or the uh, landowner or the uh, you know property managers are in a federally supported situation so there's also a federal moratorium for evictions and if your landlord has a federally backed mortgage or receives other federal federal benefits you might also have the protection through this longer uh, term federal eviction moratorium one of the challenges would be that if you have a private landlord, right? Maybe you are renting a home in someone's house, or sorry, a room or some some rooms in someone's house. Uh, it's it's difficult to know whether the for federal moratorium would apply for you. Uh, however, if you live in a, a federally subsidized housing uh, situation, right? Maybe it's a Section 8 housing or, or some other scenario, then that the longer federal moratorium applies for you, and so. What would that really mean, right? Of uh, starting a new eviction proceeding based on your failure to pay rent under the federal moratorium, that would be held off until Ju July 24th, right? So instead of the June 20th, June 19th date, um, you'd have until July 24th. Also, it's good to know that your landlord can't charge you late fees or other penalties during this period, right? So there's no uh, additional punishment for not paying your fee, right? Or your rent, right? There's no additional charge on top of your rent. One of the things we've heard in the Long Island community is that people are still having issues with their landlord despite this eviction moratorium. And so it's very important for you to know that in New York, it is a crime for a landlord to lock someone out of their home, to turn off their utilities, to remove their if their belongings or property out of the rental unit in order to force them out, right? That would be an illegal eviction. 
And that is across the board in general, a renter's right. It's not just specific to coronavirus, uh, but in general, the only way an eviction can be legal is if it's conducted by the sheriff's office. And due to this moratorium, this suspension of evictions, the sheriff office is not conducting evictions until June of 2020. And so if you've been illegally evicted, you can call the police. And we'll cover it again later, but there, there's no um, discrimination based off your immigration status either, right? I know a lot of people are concerned about any interactions with the police and, and fear of, of how that might impact or interact with their immigration status or if they don't have any status, uh, but you do have a right. And so you can file an order to show cause is, is what the sort of document form would be. And so that can help restore you to your, uh, to be, you know, access to your home, right? Of if your landlord changes the locks, if they are turning off your, your heat and your power so that it's, you know, unlivable in your rental unit, that's not allowed. And so if you're experiencing these types of, uh, you know, actions on behalf of your landlord, you can contact some different resources. And so here is the uh, number of the district court's civil department and also the Nassau Suffolk Law Services. They do a lot of work on evictions and tenants rights and things like that. So that, that's also a really good resource to contact. Um, but yeah, so you, you should not be evicted or kicked out or have your utilities turned off or have your belongings removed in general, and especially during this time when there are eviction uh, moratoriums and suspensions. So in continuation of that, right, if you're having issues with your apartment or landlord, you're able to get help from the courts, right? The courts are not gonna proceed with an eviction process, but they are there to help you with other emergency situations, right? So if your landlord locked you out, or they have turned off essential services, such as your utilities, your electricity, your heat, water, that sort of stuff, um, you can go to the courts and get help, right? They have forms and, and legal processes of what you can do. If you are having serious code violations, if you're experiencing major issues or you need serious repairs in your housing, uh, you have a right to, to have that work still, uh, that service provided. And so if the landlord is not providing that service, you're able to uh, you know, take the legal courses that the court uh, provides in order to have that. Uh, likewise, if you are in a situation where you need post eviction relief or, or whatever other options, right? This is you know, just part of a list and you can, you can definitely find more information out um, or reach out to us in order to, to get help. But, it's important to know that while the courts aren't doing cases about eviction proceedings, they are still available to assist and help tenants and renters with their housing matters. So you, you can still get help um, without fear of being evicted. And so again, I'd like us all to remember that even if you are a resident, a citizen, a, an undocumented community member at DACA, TPS holder, whatever your immigration status is, you should not be facing any discrimination or harassment. So regardless of your immigration status, you have rights as a tenant, as a renter. Uh, you, you should not be getting threats from your landlord that, oh, if you don't move out of my house, I will call the police, I will call immigration on you and tell them that you're undocumented, right? That should not be happening. And if it does, like there are many uh, advocacy organizations here to, to help you, right? And if you are receiving threats or anything like that, or, you know, some sort of discrimination, please keep track of that. Document it, record it however you can in order to, to have that information available for your situation. Um, likewise, in the discrimination realm, right, so your race, your immigration status, country of origin, religion, all of those basis of protection, you should not be discriminated against. But also during the coronavirus, we know there are people that uh, might be receiving discrimination based off having coronavirus or being thought and assumed to have coronavirus. 
So that's another area where your, your landlord cannot discriminate against you because you or someone else in your home, in your household has coronavirus, or if the landlord just thinks you do, right? He might go, oh, well, they work in the medical field, so I bet they have coronavirus because they're around sick people all day. They can't discriminate against you. Uh, if someone, say you live in an apartment building and they have uh, a notice, an, uh, an informational you know, paper sent out or posted in the apartment that says someone has coronavirus, that's one thing, but the person should not be identified, right? So for example, if I have a case of coronavirus and my landlord puts a notice up for all of the residents that I, Samantha Path, uh, have coronavirus, it should not be identifying me. However, for public safety, the other tenants can be informed that someone has coronavirus, right? But it should not be identified who it is. That that violates your privacy and different things like that. So those are just some areas to be aware. Uh, here is a, a notice from the Attorney General of New York State, Letitia James. And so the Attorney General has been doing uh, a number of things to safeguard and protect tenants' rights and, and make sure people are aware of what their rights are. And so this is just an example of, of what she's been sharing. Um, you know, just as a, you know, a reminder, evictions of all kinds are currently legal. Your landlord also cannot participate in rent gouging, right? So that's to increase the rent in order to benefit from this crisis, right? To, uh, you know, increase your rent, double it, because you have nowhere else to go, so you'll be desperate and you'll pay even more. They cannot do that. Uh, they also cannot turn off essential services, right? Withhold your electricity, your heat, your water, that sort of stuff, because you fail to pay rent, right? So that's in and of itself, a, you know, a, an illegal action. Additionally, they can't discriminate or evict you based on, on having coronavirus, or for other protected grounds, right? Like your immigration status. So if you're having issues with this, you can reach out to the Attorney General's office. They have their, their phone number and their website here. And so that's an additional resource. So here we've got some options of where you can get additional information. Nassau Suffolk Law Services is a great organization here on Long Island. As you can imagine with a name like Nassau Suffolk Law Services, they are in both counties. And so I'll just click their website real quick here. And so you can see uh, this particular link goes to uh, a page that's specifically about renters and evictions. So here is a, a drop down bar under COVID. And you can see they have a lot of resources. So this is in general, a really good place to go if you're having issues, uh, right? We know there's an uptake in, in domestic violence situations. Mental health is a big challenge for people as they are, are losing their jobs and, and just facing this very difficult, challenging time, right? Nutrition resources as people uh, might not have as good access to, to funding in order, you know, their income to buy groceries or, you know, having free lunch at school, different things like that. So there are a lot of different resources here, but I just want to show the uh, renters and evictions site real quick. So a lot of our information in this presentation came from uh, Nassau Suffolk Law Services because they just have it so well laid out, right, of, of Q&A, just click and read what you need to know. And so they also have additional information here uh, about Section 8, right? So if you live in a Section 8 uh, housing situation, if you have a voucher, you can get more information here. And so I'd also like to note, like this was last updated on the 13th of April. And so it's a changing situation and, and our organizations and, and resources on Long Island are trying to keep up with what's happening so that everyone has enough information and they can access it. As well as English, they have a Spanish version they also have a frequently asked questions page, which I would recommend. It's a very good resource to see and check out. And so they have just a quick layout, right, of if you just wanna download it onto your phone and, and have it available when you need it. 
There's also the US Department of Housing and Urban Development. They have a lot of information about tenants' rights. Uh, you can check it out, right? They have um, legal assistance, a guide, different things like that, right? So you can see, for example, uh, this is New York specific, and so it goes to um, our Attorney General's site, and you can just access different resources here. They also have um, right an area where you can do a complaint if you are having housing discrimination or just a variety of different challenges. So there are resources at the state level as well as at the, the national level. Another great resource is Law Help New York. And so here you can see their housing and tenant and homeowners rights. They've got a couple different sections, right? Maybe you are having an issue and you have to find a lawyer or you're going to court. But the main thing we'll talk about right now are the Know Your Rights resources. And so they have a lot of available information, right? So maybe you have more questions and you want to read more in depth about your rights during COVID. Uh, maybe you have a more general thing, right, of you know, pet laws and different things like that. Um, there are a lot of resources here as well as right so maybe you are having uh, issues with your landlord they're harassing you so you can see tenant harassment and landlord harassment different things like that they have plenty of resources available and so then here they have on the new york attorney general website a link to some slides that are specifically about immigrant tenant rights and so you can take a look at that uh, it's pretty informative, right? Has a question and an answer, uh, right? So again, can my landlord evict me from my apartment because of my immigration status? Nope, definitely hands down no. So this is another great resource if you have a, a wider range, right? This presentation today is pretty basic, just wanting to get, you know, the most important information out about the, the eviction moratoriums and everything but there's a lot of information here available. There's some 12 pages. So you can take a look at that. And then again, it's just the general New York uh, housing issues. So if you are having issues, you can go to, let me find their, their contact information. Oh. Yeah, so you're able to contact them and report any claims, any issues you're having. And then in addition to the housing and the renters' rights, I just wanted to provide a couple resources so that folks have access to a wide range of information. So the Long Island 211 website, you can also call physically 211 on your cell phone. Um, they have a lot of information, a lot of different resources. Uh, so much is available. So this is, in general, a really good resource to have up here. Let's see. They've got a, a COVID-19 subsection. There's just a, a lot of avail available information. Uh, for example, like the extension of the Home Energy Assistance Program, right? So that's there to help people pay for their utilities. Um, social support during isolation. Broadband available for students, right? So having internet access for students that are trying to learn remotely. So there's just so much available here on the 211 website. Uh, likewise, United Way of Long Island is another helpful uh, organization. They have uh, many resources available, but a really good thing that they have is this response fund where families across Long Island, regardless of immigration status, are able to get assistance. And so you can apply to um, receive this i think it comes in the form of maybe a gift card if i remember correctly but you can apply you can apply in spanish and so if you have questions about that you can reach out uh, either to them or, or also to Karesen, and we're ha happy to help you out and so that's a really great uh, form of support because we know many families on long island aren't eligible for unemployment based on their immigration status their work authorization or they just haven't met the 
the base period of hours worked or income gained. And so the COVID response fund is a very good support for them. I also wanted to include our Facebook page. Uh, we're regularly offering different information, resources. Uh, we have workshops like this one where, that we're on today. We have different videos, so you can see there, um, but just Karesen NY. And this is on the back end, so sorry, everyone's kind of seeing the uh, not public side as I'm an administrator. But if you look for this, right, Karesen NY, uh, you know, we are a nation of immigrants. You can see there what kind of resources we're offering. And so we, we're always happy to help um, however we can. And so if you have any questions, I don't know if we've, we've got a couple people on, so we'll, we'll probably have a, a few questions that hopefully I'm able to help out. But in the future, uh, you know, once we're off this video call, this uh, webinar, you're able to contact the Office for New Americans. They have a hotline that is is open to all of the new york immigrant community and you can call them for questions about immigration questions about renters rights questions about how to access um health care or how to find legal representatives and lawyers who can help with different cases, right? Whether it's immigration or other things, right? They they are a statewide hotline that is there to help with a wide variety of, of issues and questions. And then I've also got our Grayson phone number here, our Hempstead office. And we're still working during the pandemic. We're all working from home. We're all doing whatever we can to help the community members that we are all so happy to serve. And feel free to give us a call. We are uh, open from Monday to Friday from nine to five. And so there might be a lunch hour there from like one to two where people aren't really able to answer the phone, but call our, our main office number and it'll channel through to our reception and they will be able to connect you with whoever you need uh, to, to contact, okay? So thank you so much for joining us. And I hope this has helped you all gain a better understanding of your basic rights as renters and tenants, especially during these challenging times of uh, the COVID pandemic. And so please remember that there are no evictions currently happening. Your landlord cannot kick you out. They can't remove your utilities. Uh, and you should not be receiving any discrimination based off your immigration status, or if you or someone has coronavirus, or your landlord thinks you have coronavirus. So please remember that you have rights and there are plenty of us here to help you uh, take action if you feel like your rights are being violated. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Samantha. Uh, it is important to get the facts, especially during this crisis. There is assistance available for families and I encourage families to access those resources that they need. Harrison is right here in Hempstead. Um, they're an invaluable um, asset in our community. Uh, thank you again, Samantha. Thank you again, Karasen. Uh, this session has been recorded and we it will be on our website for viewing. Check the uh, archive video section on www.ecsworkshop.org. We have more workshops scheduled for this week. There is a workshop on Thursday by Dr. Uh, Cole that will give you an update tips uh, and tips to keep you and your family safe, uh, as well as information about nearby testing sites uh, for COVID-19. Please jo join us for these workshops. Thank you, Samantha, and thank you, Karisen, for presenting this topic to, our, uh, to this community. Yes, thank you so much. Have a great night.